Listen up, boy, I'll be a coach. Teach you how to think different with a new approach. I hope you're taking notes. Haters think it's jokes. They got me fired up, but they don't want the smoke. My check one, two, and two, ladies and gentlemen. You're now in the building with your boy, Coach K. And this is the first five, season number six. We continue as we keep things moving. First and foremost, we want to thank everybody for tuning in, tapping in each and every week as we aim to deliver the best to help you to be 1% better each and every day. And today, we have a very special guest who's going to help us to do that as well. Her name is Lorena, uh, the owner of Balance Breakthrough Training. She's out here. She had to drive kind of far. She crossed a bridge. <laughs> <Not too far. laughs> she had to cross a bridge. She, she met a troll along the way, answered three questions because she comes from all the way from the East End. But I appreciate you coming here today. Thank you so much for coming. Of course. It's I'm a, so happy to be here. It's the first time we're actually meeting in person. I'm loving doing these interviews where I got to meet people in person um, for the first time because it's exciting when you get to know people that you see virtually, but now you can see them in person. You can see them in their lovely form. Amazing. Thank you very much. You even brought me. Some bands here. Ooh. Workout bands. Okay, 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 okay. I'll make sure I put these in the gym, make sure no one steals them because people have a tendency to do that these days. Um, so I want to get in, get into the conversation because obviously getting to know you more is the, is the purpose of the conversation. Um, nothing to be scared of, nothing to be shy about. We're just here, two people talking, just having a good time. Um, so talk a bit about your background. You were Italian. Mm -hmm. Italia. So, exactly. So okay. I'm actually... I'm Italian, but I don't really consider myself... My parents are second-generation Italian, okay. so I've never been to Italy, so I'm kind of a fake Italian here, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we're thriving, we're thriving. <laughs> and I barely speak Italian, so we're a bit of a fake, but that's my... My background is Italian-Canadian. Yeah. Um, my parents... Well, my grandparents came here when they were about 17 years old okay. to give them and my parents a better life, and here we are. Okay. And you're thriving, like you said. Thriving. That's amazing. <laughs> when your parents see the progress that you've made... Mm -hmm. from you know their child young child to now you're as a trainer fitness professional entrepreneur mm -hmm. what do they think how do they feel okay I think I think more than they do about it because I think I see like the patterns that I'm breaking in my parents okay um like I wouldn't say generate like my parents generation of course mm -hmm. I feel like the old generation I, I don't know if this is an Italian thing or just like a people thing but mm -hmm. they like Italians are very big people pleasers okay. and I think that got passed down to me and actually I like as soon as I started my business, um, I learned that you know people pleasing is only affecting you and not only you as a business, but you as a person, you as right. a friend, you as a partner, and you as everything. Yeah. So that was one thing that I really realized. Like, wow, that came from my parents, and mm. it's not necessarily a bad thing, but right. just something that I needed to change in order to run my business better and be a better person. Right. And actually, that was shout out to Jay. <laughs> that was Jay that made me realize that that you know you got to stop people pleasing because at the end of the day, like it's only affecting you in a negative way and I think right. that's just one of the things that I learned from my parents yeah but what not to do okay <laughs> you know yeah I got you you're able to adapt that and adjust exactly, it along the way exactly. yeah we learn a lot of things from our parents especially mm -hmm. a lot of good lessons that we can learn from them for, for sure. sure definitely there's a lot of good but I think there's a lot of patterns that as you get older like obviously our generations are changing so I think that we learn those are the like yes I love so many things, like everything about my parents, but there's so many things that I would do differently, let's say, with yeah. my kids, with myself, mm. with my business, mm. um, you know, just with life in general. So yeah. I think there's a lot that we learn from them in a positive way, but also in a negative way. And I'm sure my kids one day will say the same thing about me, like, you know, you're a great mother, but there's this, this, this that I, I would do differently. And that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it happens like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. But at least you're able to take the good mm -hmm. and see some of the, maybe some of the bad things too, exactly. but be able to shape yourself and mold uh, mold yourself into who you are today. Mm -hmm. um, what lessons do you take from the example of your parents? Like what they had to go through, what they experienced, even your grandparents okay. too. So the lessons that I've learned mm -hmm. definitely is to never give up, be a hard worker. Um, I get my go-getter personality from my mom. That's mm -hmm. for sure. My mom from a young age has been my role, like my biggest role model. She, you know, with three kids, like always working a full-time job. She always showed up for all of us. Like she was, she was that girl, like up at 5 a.m., you know, walking to the Metro, cooking, doing everything for us, like being, like holding the house down, you know? So my mother is definitely my, my inspiration. And she was like, to this day, you know, I look up to her and it's like, oh my God, I wish I could be able to do half the things that like she does in a day. Cause I'm just exhausted after like, ha like just listening to yeah. that, you know? So yeah. my mother was, has definitely like paved the way for me in that sense of, you know, you want something, you got to go get it. Like, no one's going to get it for you and no one's going to help you get it because at the end of the day, like, you're all you've got. Whether you have a partner, whether you have friends, whether you have a good family, like, nothing in life is guaranteed and those people are never guaranteed. 
and like you, the only person you'll ever wake up and go to sleep with is yourself so you have to be there for you and you have to you know do make your dreams come to like become reality at in a to a certain extent yeah see so are you would you say you're a person that's big on speaking things into existence um, okay, so I used to be, I used to never believe in manifestation, anything mm. spiritual, anything religious. I think it's really last year that I got into manifestation. So I really started like writing things down mm. and like, this is what I want. And again, shout out Jay. He was yeah. the one that made me realize this in his mentorship class that you really need to write down and like visualize who you want to be. And you have to show up as that person like every single day. So I started manifesting a lot last year and I had like a journal and then looking back at it, like, let's say three months later, I was like, wow, okay, I already accomplished this, 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 and this. Yeah. And then looking back six months later, I was like, wow, again. So I kind of started to believe in the whole manifestation thing. Mm. And I think this year was, like, a lot of getting closer to faith. Mm. So, like, manifestation mixed with, like, prayer and, you know, just having trust in a higher power and, like, believing that, you know, someone's guiding you. And I yeah. think the two really, like, clicked and linked for me where yeah. I was like, I loved manifestation and I, you know, but then it's like, I realized that manifestation is not just the universe. That manifestation is coming from a higher power. Mm. Like they're coming together and as one. So I think yeah. that's really the most that I implement in like my day to day life now is manifestation, but also prayer. All right. That's cool. That's cool. A lot of people, um, um, I'm, I'm a spiritual person myself mm -hmm. as well, um, religious person, but I know a lot of people kind of shy away from mm -hmm. that direction of things because, you know, they feel what they feel, which is respectable. It's, mm -hmm. it's cool. Teach their own. Um, but to, to hear that somebody has as part of their routine, mm -hmm. I think is really cool, mm -hmm. uh, especially being a young person too, um, because it, it does show that you are not trying to do things on your own. Mm -hmm. You are relying on, on the greatest personage in the universe to help mm -hmm. you to do that. So that's amazing. And you learn that from your parents as mm -hmm. well. So that's awesome as well. Who would you say had the biggest impact on your come up? And, and you mentioned Jay. Shout out to Jay. Yeah, shout Jay out to Jay. Bully. Shout out to Jay. Jay the bully. Okay, <laughs> doing his thing, doing his teaching thing. Mm -hmm. um, but who would you say had the biggest impact on your come up? Like, was it siblings, your family members, teachers? Okay, and let's say business-wise or just fitness-wise in, in general? general, in general. Okay. We can tap so, into all. You can, we can touch yeah, on all. Cool. I think, okay, the, the one thing that got, so this was kind of a negative, <laughs> a negative comment, but yeah. that turned into kind of inspiration mm -hmm. and that made me start fitness in general was actually, like, not being bullied, but, uh, like, a, a dumb boy made a comment when I was in a uh, high school actually mm -hmm. about my weight and that was exactly what pushed me to start training um once I started training that's what pushed me basically this is like long story short um that's what pushed me to start training obviously at 14 years old like I didn't lose weight the proper way I wasn't eating as much mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of cardio like you know which led me to multiple eating disorders body dysmorphia all binge eating all of like the whole five yards that yeah. led me to that and I think that is what let me led me to see fitness as a positive and not a negative. Gotcha. So I think if it wasn't for him, also I went through all of this alone mm -hmm. by choice mm -hmm. because I just I'm not the type of person to ask for help, and I feel like I needed to figure myself out before I could have asked anyone else to figure me out. So shout out to him because yeah. he was the one that led me to lose weight, that led me, which evidently led me to you know get these eating disorders, body dysmorphia, which led me down like a 10 year track of, you know, trying to heal and try to be better, yeah. which made me actually fall in love with fitness and not see it as my enemy. And that's what really made me, um, you know, push me to start my journey. And actually I was working at a gym as a receptionist and there was one of, I was seeing personal trainers and I was like, wow, I would love this. Like I was in college. I was miserable. I hated my life. I hated going to school. I like, you know, the thought of, like, what do I want to be? Who do I want to be? Like, it consumed me. I was like, I, like, you know, I was filling a void with, like, other things. And, um, yeah, so this girl, Sasha, she's a social media manager. So shout out Sasha because she's... We shout out everybody today. <laughs> Jay, amazing. Sasha, the bully. <laughs> the bully who told her about Literally. her weight. No, but for us, Sasha and Jay That's were the two, like, main, my main motivations yeah. to this day. Yeah. So Sasha was a client of another personal trainer at the gym mm. and she was like, listen, you got to start, like you got to start, you, you, like you're seeing this is, this is what you're passionate about, like this is what you love, like you got to do something. So she, she was the one actually that forced, like that, not forced me, pushed me, mm. sorry, to um, start my personal training course while I was in college and she was like becoming a social media manager at the time. So she was like, 
you need to start posting and she was giving me a lot like obviously I was I was shy I was like I don't know what people are gonna think I come from a very Italian small judgmental town like area yeah and you know I was like oh people are gonna judge me like I was so scared about other things and she I remember it was a Friday night and she was like you just need to stop and you just need to start posting and then I think that was really the start of like my career as a trainer because I was like okay I finished my exam and then I was just like tunnel vision she was always messaging me like you got to continue like don't stop don't stop and I was also surrounded by other trainers at my gym so that was just super motivating yeah so yeah I think this would have nothing would have happened if that boy didn't make that stupid comment about me when I was young yeah so I think it was just like it's just a prime example that like whatever you're going through good or bad like it has it's it's in your life for a reason now but you might not maybe see it till like 10 years later like me. yeah I, I, I hear what you're saying with that that doesn't make a lot of sense because I mean we all have experiences as to what shapes our shapes our business mm-hmm. and shapes our foundation. It sounds like those experiences is what actually shaped you to be mm-hmm. the exactly. the trainer that you are today. How long have you been in fitness now? So ever since I started training, working out, it's ten years. Mm-hmm. I've been a trainer for almost two now. Okay. Mm-hmm. And how's the experience going for you so far? I love it. Honestly, I yeah. find it's definitely challenging for sure because I think one of my biggest weaknesses is um I tend to like latch on obviously you're training you're hearing a lot of people's like problems personal Mm -hmm. things yeah so at the beginning it was hard for me to disassociate like work and you know i would make other people's problems my own yeah that was the only downfall but there's so many and you know you learn as you go too you know it's like okay well work is work this like home is home you can't mix the two Mm -hmm. but i've i've like it's an amazing journey i've met so many amazing women like i've built such an amazing community like i feel like not I feel like, but people have told me I've changed their lives. Like, it's still crazy for me to think, like, okay, well, people have said you've changed their lives. But yeah. it's like, I, I have, you know, but yeah. it's crazy to admit and say. But, yeah, so I, it's honestly been an amazing journey. Like I said, there's so many people that I would have never met if mm. I didn't, um, you know, start training people. And so many of my clients, I see it all the time, have shaped me as a person. So mm. it's like they've, you know, they've brought me different experiences and, like, different perspectives and I'm like wow that's amazing that's amazing and you know there's a lot of people that are also older than me that you know like still look up to me but I look up to them in a sense that they've you know not only are they my client and I'm so proud of everything they've achieved weight loss weight gain you know and but they've just showed me so many life lessons that I would have never like been exposed to if I wasn't a trainer yeah yeah um to piggyback on that Mm -hmm. what you just said your experience and experiences that you've had thus far, can you talk about one that you've had that you were like, this is why I'm in this? Okay, def- I don't think there's one okay. specifically, but I think it really goes back to people saying, like people validating that I've, I've really helped them and changed their life. I think that's, because you know, I'm very, and I feel, I'm not a perfectionist, but it's just like, you know, I won't really celebrate my accomplishments all the time. So yeah, you know, let's say I'll have a client that'll lo- that I'll have lost 20 pounds. I'll be super proud of them and myself, of course. But when someone really tells you, like, you are the reason I changed, like, you are the reason I'm doing better, you are the reason that I I can do this, you are the reason I move, you're the, you know, like, you are my motivation. Like, I think that's been, like, the most impactful thing on me in a sense of, like, okay, wow, like, I'm actually part of their journey, you know, like I might, you know, like I might stay in their brain forever, like forever, you know, and this like, they might not have like never been there if it wasn't for me and I wasn't going to push them, you know, so I think that was like the biggest thing for me. Yeah, well, if that bully can stay in your brain Mm -hmm. (laughs) for this long, I'm pretty sure who you have an impact on. Exactly, and I always think of that too, like I always think of, let's say, Jay and Sasha, which again were the two people, Sasha first and then Jay Mm. came after when I did his mentorship, but they were the two people that have really like stayed on my mind. Like I still message them to this day and like check up on both of them and, you know, like like, congratulate them because they're both doing amazing so it's like, and I always, that's what I think of. And I go back to like, if they've stayed in my brain mm-hmm. for this long, like two years later, one year later, yeah. you know, what makes me different from everyone else? Like, I know I help people in, to the same extent and like people have told me that. So that's what really makes me like keep going. And also I feel like when you build a relationship with your clients, mm-hmm. it it's helpful too, because it's like, you're not only showing up for, you know, anyone you're showing up for someone who trusts you who values you yeah. who lo- loves you as a person and who appreciates the work you put in so 
That's what's up. Mm-hmm. You shout out to your clients because they shout out to uh, my clients for definitely real. have helped you to be a hundred percent to be uh, to be where you are today. It's, mm-hmm. I, it's crazy. Before we started, she said I was super nervous. Mm-hmm. No nerves, man. Yeah, That's no, what's no. up. I love Once it. Once I start talking, I'm good. You're good to go. <laughs> it's just <laughs> getting there, you know. So, so now that you have your you you've been in the fitness industry now for two years, but mm-hmm. you've been exposed to fitness. 10 plus years um obviously a lot of trends have come and gone Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of things are still coming up still going through what are some trends that you have seen that you're a fan of you're like okay that could stick around or not really a fan of honestly i'm not a fan of trends period (laughs) um but i feel like it is super easy to get caught up in them because again i like i think about everything like at from a, my younger self perspective. And yeah. it's like, when I was lost and I had no, like, not that I had nobody, because I always had people, that's the wrong choice of words. But when I was lost in the fitness industry specifically, and I felt like I had no one to turn to or look to, I was the one following those trends. Yeah. So I understand how it's so easy to like look at a video and be like, how to, you know, mm-hmm. get a butt in five weeks or how to lose 21 pounds in, you know, five days. Like, I, I feel like it's definitely easy to fall in those trends if you don't know better. Right. But as a trainer and as someone who's been in like the industry for this long, not that long, but this long, so far I don't really believe in trends. And I feel like it's just there's you have to find something that works for you and that's consi- like that's gonna keep you consistent. And I feel like these trends are super easy to follow like short term, but yeah. is it realistic? You know, are you gonna do this for the rest of your life? Yeah. And I tell all my clients like and this is something I implement in my life too, like you know, I don't want kids anytime soon, but I'm like, is what you're doing something you would teach to your child? And if it's not, well, you shouldn't be doing it. You know, the cutting carbs, uh, the, you know, eating one meal a day, like, you know, all these trends that you might see are like, you yeah. know, the, the quick workouts. And it's like, would you teach your child this? No. So why are you doing it? Why are you doing that mm-hmm. too? Uh, that's a really good point. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Um, but obviously, trends is what kind of like keeps things mm-hmm. going well from a, um, a social, social media, media standpoint, mm-hmm. uh, which we're going to tap into about mm-hmm. that as well. I had a I had an interview with a, another trainer, a very experienced trainer I've known mm-hmm. for a number of years, and one thing that she was saying was the thing that gets her annoying about annoyed about trends is that people will come and they'll try to show her, okay, this is what I want, and she's like, uh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I, I, I agree with you. that. I agree you know, with that because she's she's a, a huge advocate of keep it simple, mm-hmm. and she used to do fitness competitions and stuff, so she knows you do the simple stuff. You, you know, increase the weight, increase the reps, timing of rest, stuff like mm-hmm. that is what's key. So what are some basics that you stick to when it comes to training with your clients? Uh, do you create, like, complicated programs for them, or mm-hmm. is it more just like a... Okay, so definitely when I first started, it was... M- I was very different than... <laughs> my programs were very different than what, what I am now, but I yeah. think that was, that's just me evolving as a person and as a trainer. And, you know, with my own trainings, I personally would never give... A program to a client that I wouldn't do okay. that's my motto right now um so it's very much sticking to the basics and you know like a lot of people don't want to hear it it's like a lot of people don't like that but it's like you know what if you want that you know booty blast like I'll, I train booty like don't yeah, get me wrong yeah, yeah but like if you want that like Pilates vibe like that's not me mm-hmm. so you know I think it's also finding you know not you're not everyone's cup of tea and that's fine mm-hmm. so I think like if someone would come to me and be like I want this 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 and this and that's not something I'm willing to shift my values for and like shift my program because like at the end of the day you are your program it's by you so you know it's it taps into my values beliefs everything so it's like if that's not something I'm okay with I would just say hey listen like you know maybe I don't I'm not the best fit for you here is someone that I think would be you know so I think that I agree with her in that sense that you know Clients will come out to me and be like, oh, I want to be doing this. And I'm like, what is the point? <laughs> like, there's no, yeah. I try to make them understand to the best of my abilities. But if they're really stuck on, I want to be doing this, it's like, well, then why are you paying me? Yeah. You, know, you, should, yeah. you should find someone who will give you the quality of service that you're looking for. That you're for. looking for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially when, pff, man, I, I'm glad I don't get that anymore. Mm-hmm. But there was a period of time where, yeah, you know, for sure. someone showed me something. Like, I want to look like this. And I go, Mm-hmm. But people don't understand it's also genetics. For sure. It's also like, you know, like when I was younger, going back to that too, like I, the hourglass and like thigh gap was in. And I was like, this is what I want because everyone had that, yeah. obviously. Yeah. 
And like, you imagine like, it was a thing. Yeah, like, that was that was a thing. Thigh and you know, like thicker women gap. were like shunned upon, and like, yeah. no, you have to look like this. And I was like, okay. And like, you know, I wanted that hourglass figure. And now it's like, I've been my lowest, like my lowest weight. Mm. And it's like my rib cage just does not do that. Mm. And people don't understand that like, you can be, you can reach your lowest weight till you're like unhealthy and you will still not look like that mod- that fitness model you want to look like because yeah. that's not what your genetics permits you to look like. So, like, people have to understand that. And I think, again, that comes with time, age, like, going through your own issues. But I think that's a major thing. Like, people will be like, I want to look like this. And I'm like, girl, she's 5'9", you're 5'3". You guys have <laughs> different body too. types. <laughs> Let's not compare. Yeah. Like, you've got to learn how to be happy with yourself. Yeah. There's a quote, as you mentioned, the word mm-hmm. compare. Uh, comparison is the thief of joy. Mm-hmm. How do you take that? Okay. I always say, so there's my own quote that I that I always say. It kind of goes with the comparison mm-hmm. thing. But, um, and I, I tell this to all my clients, take a vouch for it, is if you can't find something to be happy about yourself when you're unhappy, mm-hmm. you'll never be happy even when you Me do either. reach that goal. Yeah. So... That taps into comparison because I feel like when you're, let's say, at a low point in your life where you're not really content with yourself, whether that's physically, mentally, spiritually, anything, it's like that you're going to go compare yourself to someone in the gym, online, you know, you'll never find that, like, happiness within yourself. So that's what I always tell people, like, let's say a new client that comes to me and wants to lose 20 pounds, it's like, I want to look like you, let's say, for example, because I get that a lot where people, like, clients will compare themselves to me. And it's like, I tell them, if you are not, if you don't find at least one, even one thing to be happy with yourself now, even when you reach that goal, you won't be happy. Yeah. You'll always find something to critique about yourself. You'll always find something to, you know, bash about yourself. You'll always find something to compare about yourself to others. So it's like, if you, I don't know, something as like silly as like, oh, like, I like my hip dips, you know, or like even just forcing yourself to believe that you do enjoy something about yourself. Like, yeah. Even when you reach that, let's say, goal of losing 30, 40, 50 pounds, getting a bug, getting abs, you'll never be happy. Mm. So I think it's that taps into the comparison thing. But I think it's inevitable at the end of the day. Like, we live in a generation with social media, with, you know, all these things going around. So I think it's normal to compare yourself to a certain extent, but mm. you've got to know where to draw the line draw lines, and sure. be like, okay, well, this is me and this is them. You're never going to be 100% happy with yourself. There's always going to be things you want to change. But at the end of the day, you have to love yourself because you're all you got. So Yeah. Do you find that, because the majority, majority of your clients are female, mm-hmm. do you find that a lot of the comparison, uh, I want to say syndrome, but mm-hmm. challenge, happens more with younger girls than it does with your older clients? Or is it pretty much the same? I would say I think it's pretty much the same. same. I think it really depends who you are as a person. I think no matter, like, age, you know, and I think it also stems from insecurity, Mm. for sure. So I feel like if you're more insecure, you'll tend to compare yourself a little bit more, which is normal. Like, I'm super insecure about a lot of things about myself, and I do compare myself too, but I kind of learn where to draw that, okay, well, I still have to, like, I'm still happy with myself, and just because I don't like my arms, like, like, I'm going to survive, you know? Yeah. It's just like, you know, I'll never look like that toned person that I'm striving to be because that's just my genetics. So I think, again, it doesn't matter an age. I mm. think it just, it's mostly based on, like, your confidence and yeah. your, like, how secure you are with yourself. Even aside from, like, body shape and stuff, do you ever look at other people's businesses and go, man, how come I'm not there yet? No. How come this is not happening for me the way it's happening for this person? That's something that doesn't affect you? No, honestly, never. I always just looked at myself, like, in my own lane. That's good. And honestly, I know that, like, I have enough faith in myself and my abilities that if I want something, I could have it. Even if it's not, let's say, now, I know that I have the work ethics to accomplish that. And at the end of the day, like, people compare themselves to social media. It's like... It can be a hundred percent fake, mm-hmm. so it's like you you might be comparing yourself to something that's not even true. Yeah. So I'll never look at someone and be like, "That's my competition." Like, yeah. You know, I feel like at the end of the day, you're only putting yourself down. Like, I'll never understand people who put other people down to make themselves like feel bigger. Yeah. So I'll never do that. Yeah. But I'll look at people as motivation for sure. Like, wow, oh my god, I love where she's at. Like, I, you know, would love to be there and like you know, like, get tips from them, you know, mm. like, 
see, use them as a, like, not use them, like, see them as a mentor. Yeah. And, like, get ideas from them, but I'll never, like, be envious or jealous or, like, oh, I wish I was that person. Yeah. Never. So, so compared to, like, 10 years ago to compared to now, mm-hmm. where is your content level? Are you content with where you are? Mm-hmm. Are you happy about the progress that you made? Mm-hmm. Um, or are you still looking like, oh, man, I could still do better? Okay. Yeah. Okay, are we talking about fitness or, like, as a person in general? Well, in general, because I know okay. that you've made some some changes, which I want you mm-hmm. to talk about, too. Mm-hmm. You've made some changes from, a, like, a social media standpoint, mm-hmm. um, just some of the things you've you've been presenting, which yeah. I think is awesome. Mm-hmm. So, Okay, well, I definitely think I don't give myself enough credit. That's one thing. Mm. So, as a whole, I'm super happy with where I'm at right now. Um, they're obviously, like everyone else, I feel like if you're not, if there's nothing you would change about yourself, you're not in the right state. Because mm. I feel like, like as a trainer, as a person, as a human, as a partner, as a friend, as a family member, like there's constant things you could be doing to improve your relationships, your friendships, and everything, like just you as a person. So I feel like in that sense, there is a lot that I want to improve of, improve on that right. like, you know, can overwhelm me sometimes too. But at the end of the day, like I am super happy with, you know, my discipline, my motivation, my business, like, you know, with everything so I think definitely like my younger self would be super proud of like where I'm at today and which like that's all, that's all I that's all I strive for in life is like to be that role model that like I wish I had when I was younger yeah so who did you look up to as like a person that was in a similar position uh, similar position as you that you looked up mm-hmm. to and said yeah you know they were able to thrive and survive with this I could do the same thing too Honestly, nobody. Nobody. Yeah. <laughs> nobody. So you. that's why I'm like so advocate and like so big on, you know, showing up as the person I wish I had. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I feel like especially as like a young girl in, in this generation, which is I feel like worse than when I was younger. Yeah. Um, it's so easy to get caught up in like what everyone else wants you to be. But it's like you have to take a step back and realize like, is this who I want to be? Yeah. You know, is this is this my journey? Is this my path? Or am I just following someone else's yeah. like someone else's vision? You know, so I think that's that. And I was actually doing a video on this in my car before, um, before coming here was just like, that's my biggest motivation every day. Like when I'm in a funk or when I'm not like, you know, feeling my best is just showing up as a person Mm. I always wish I had, or like the person, you know, that I look up to, like, am I doing the things like that the people I look up to right now are doing? Honestly, so far it's been a pleasure having this conversation, this interaction and see, the reason behind why I have these podcasts in the first mm-hmm. place is to get to know persons that I see and mm-hmm. I follow and I go, okay, mm-hmm. what are they about? Mm-hmm. You know, because we sometimes can look at somebody and go, like judge them. Yeah, judge them. You know, mm-hmm. not saying I ever judge you, no, but you look at sure. someone and you go, ah, what are they really about? Mm-hmm. And then you have a conversation with them and you go, oh, okay, mm-hmm. break down. Starting thing. to understand. Yeah, you start to understand them a bit more, which mm-hmm. is awesome. What shapes the core of who you are and how you work with your clients? Okay. Definitely, it's in the name, balance. Um, I definitely strive for balance, and I see what, you know, like I said, I had mentioned to you at the beginning, I I live in extremes. It's either yes or no for me. There's mm. rarely a middle ground, but, like, with fitness, I've realized that there has to be that middle ground or, you know, it's not sustainable. So I think that's really what my eating disorders, like, help me realize. So um, definitely, like, a balance in, you know, I'll never be that trainer that's, like, count your calories, do this, you know, but at the end of the day, like, I do explain to my clients from the beginning, like, results are 80% you, it's what you eat, I'm just there to, for the fitness part, Yeah. but I think that's the main, like, focus for all of my clients is really balance, like, just, you can enjoy the little, and, like, especially that, to add, mm. a lot of my clients are, let's say, within the 20 to 30 range, Yeah. so it's, like, this is the time to live your life, like, don't stop, like, don't be thinking about training on vacation. Like, enjoy it. Don't be, yeah. you know, like, don't stop yourself from eating pasta just because you want to lose weight and you saw a diet online that told you to cut carbs. Like, I'm really just about promoting. You could have everything you want, just mm-hmm. not necessarily at the same time sometimes. Yeah. But, you know, I think that's what I strive to tell all my clients is really just balance and, you know, still enjoying the little things in life while yeah. still reaching your goal. That's 100% a possibility. Mm-hmm. But, you know, obviously, if you want to be an athlete or different things, you know, there's there's differences. Yeah. But that's what I, that's the main, like, belief of and, like, values of my brand is just balancing your life, whether that's 
nutrition, whether that's school and gym, whether that's, you know, being a mom and, and finding time to train, but it's like really just pouring in your cup to be able to pour in others. Got you. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. That's, that's mm -hmm. very, very good. Um, who would you say are your biggest supporters? And my biggest you, supporters? Yeah. Okay. Um, my family and my boyfriend, for sure. Yeah. I wouldn't be where I am without them. Um, my family has shaped me into who I am today, but my boyfriend is always there to support me and, you know, to make sure that I'm doing what I got to do. And, you know, he's always there on my bad days, on my good days. So is my family. Yeah. So I think they're the two, like, major people, mm -hmm. um, like, groups of people that have just like help me in unimaginable ways and I know I'll always have them to fall back on which yeah. is super amazing now you did mention that you were like I'm gonna go do Ramadan with mm -hmm. him because he's, he's mm -hmm. Muslim how has that been for you so far okay that's been super challenging the first week for sure yeah um because I like I had mentioned to you before I've never fasted in my life mm. so it was definitely a big 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 adjustment for me for my body mm. for sure with fitness but I've been like really educating myself a lot about it and you know, I've been following a lot of fitness influencers and women, um, like Muslim women, and they were just like giving tips and advice on when to train, how to train. So I was, uh, again, from someone who was super hard on, hard on themselves, mm. I really like gave myself like carte blanche that week and I was like very, not as hard on myself because I was like, okay, my body is adapting to something I've never done in my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I got a lot of headaches. I got caffeine, caffeine withdrawals. Um, I was not used to the not drinking water. I was very dizzy, very nauseous, like very moody, tired. And like, I'm not going to lie, I really thought about giving up. But mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, it's going to get easier. It's going to get better. And we're on week two right now. And it did get a, lot, get a lot easier for sure, get a lot better. But it's just being super like kind with yourself this month because obviously your body's not going to have the same energy to push, you know, yeah. those two plates or those, you know, heavy lifts. It's just, yeah. I saw a quote and it was like, just um, like move your body and be thankful that you can. Yeah. And be thankful that like, you know, just it's really a month about like spiritual awareness and like being thankful and grateful for what you have because there's mm. people that wish and like pray that they could be in your position. Right. So I definitely have been seeing like my finish journey from a different like perspective this month. So I've really been just happy I can move my body and I'm not yeah. not looking to push the heaviest weights or to have the longest workouts or to have the best workouts, but just to move. That's really my That's goal. That's really your goal is. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's something else you said before. You said you were going to give up, but mm -hmm. you said, I've never given up on a workout. Uh, yes. Okay. So I kind of, <laughs> I kind of, it's weird to like say, but I've kind of thought of it in that sense. Like yeah. if I'm training, and I'm like pushing till failure, I will not give up. And if I give up, I will get back up and continue. And continue from there. Um, and I think that's, it's with anything in life, not only just with fitness, but it's just, I don't like saying I gave up on something when not that I didn't necessarily try, but when I didn't necessarily like try it to its full potential. Gotcha. So in my brain, this was just like the same thing. Yeah. I was like, I committed to this. It was my choice a hundred percent and I want to do this. So if I give up now, like, I know I'm not failing anyone yeah. but myself. But yourself. So I was like, you know, there's, and I think it was very, like, uplifting to think that, okay, there's, like, millions of people doing this around the world. Do you think you're really the only person that's feeling like, like this? No. So it's like, that's what I just reminded myself. And I also, like, reminded myself there's kids and people that are starving. So it's like, they feel that every single day. Yeah. You could survive 30 days. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it so is. So that's what really pushed me. It is all about putting things in perspective. But it's mm -hmm. good that you're able to use that mm -hmm. fitness perfect perspective sure. and apply it to that because mm -hmm. uh, you use what's relatable mm -hmm. and then say, okay, what can I relate to that might be comparable to this? Mm -hmm. And even though it's not the exact same thing, it gives you a perspective. It gives you a perspective and it allows you to use your mind, your thinking to be like, okay, mm -hmm. but if I do, if I'm able to do this, mm -hmm. um, I found myself doing that a, a yeah. lot with certain things too, where I want to be better at. Um, you know, progressing in some direction, whether it be like reading more mm -hmm. and like, you know, positive self-talk and things like that. And I think same thing. Mm -hmm. If I can go outside and run mm -hmm. minus 28, mm -hmm. cream, you could stand up for like two hours and do, mm -hmm. do some volunteering for and stuff sure. like that, you know? And it's, it's, it's just because you have to see what you can compare it to. But I think it also comes down to priorities. Like, yeah, I know true. there's a that lot too. of people that wouldn't like, that wouldn't, compromise certain things in life for for like a bigger goal but I think it really comes out to priorities and like what do you think is important so you know if let's say for example like you don't think 
that's imp- like something's important, you won't prioritize that. So yes. I think it does come down to that as well. Like, you know, what do you what do you value? What do you believe in? And like, what would you change in order to to adapt to that? Mm-hmm. You know, that new thing. So I think it, com- it boils down to that as well. Boils down to that as well. Um, what would you say are three components that you would give, or that you would say are part of a good foundation? Mm-hmm. Okay, again, so like as a person. Yeah. Okay, so three components that. Like, as a foundation, okay. Yeah. Let me think about this one. Yeah, 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 give it some thought. Three things that you would say are, like, for you to be a good person or even be good with your business or being good with your brand or even just mm-hmm. good, just a good person all, all around. Okay, definitely what one. What three things would you think you should is have? Is speaking your truth. Okay. Um, like, being 100% yourself and never turning back. Um, again, like, when you are yourself, you will attract the people that, you know, trust you and believe in you and, like, your people. And at the end of the day, you you can't run from yourself. You're all you got, so you got to show up as that person, like I said before. So definitely one is staying true to yourself because you will attract your type of people. Yeah. Um, being compassionate is definitely another one. You know, I feel like without being compassionate and empathetic, like, you don't have much in life, you mm-hmm. know. And, and the third one is, this should have been my first one, but just basic respect, you know. And I do see this, like, a lot in, I'm not going to say no with people like you know in general yeah i feel like just because you don't believe in something that other people believe or just you know i feel like there's a lot of hate in the world and a lot of not only hate but just disrespect in general yeah you know when it comes to beliefs when it comes to um you know it could be even fitness things when it comes to anything i feel like people don't like that other people have different ideologies and ideas and I feel like that creates, like, tension and disrespect. Like, it could be political views. It could be fitness views. It could be anything. Mm-hmm. So I feel like respect is definitely, like, that should have been number one on my list. That is number one on my list. It's just, you know, just because you don't agree with something that someone else does, says, or believes in doesn't mean it's wrong and doesn't mean that they deserve to be looked at as any less of a person, whether that's a client, whether that's a family member, whether that's a friend, partner, anything. So I think that's that's number one for sure is just treating everyone the way you would want to be treated no matter what, the goal. they are. That's it. That's what's up. All right. Um, moving forward, I again, I appreciate your time coming here. We still got more. Still got more to go. Mm-hmm. Um, if you guys are tuning in for the first time here, Lorena is here. First time she's actually not she, not first time she's <laughs> there with Alan. I make it sound like you took a spaceship here. You did. <laughs> <laughs> almost, <laughs> she, almost. She has a car. She can. She got here. Um, but as far as goals and stuff that you're working on for yourself, is there you know? A project in the works. Okay, honestly, um, a project. I'm really a project. I'm doing is my six week program. That's oh yes, you mentioned fitness that. Fitness wise, I saw that, yeah. But I think also like business wise, I'm trying to work on. Okay, as a personal trainer and like I am my business. Mm-hmm. That's what I've realized like a long time ago. So if I'm not like good as a person, mm-hmm. my business will not be good. So that just follows. Yeah. So right now, yeah, I'm working on my six week program, and I just launched my band. So I have like. I have those things going for me, but the biggest thing is really, like, working on myself this year. So I feel like I've, like, there's so many, like, last year I was trying to fill a void and, you yeah. know, always running from, like, my internal thoughts and, like, my internal dialogues. And I was, like, so consumed with my business, which was amazing because that's how you grow a business and, yeah. you know, move forward and gain a clientele. But I feel like I lost myself in a sense. Well, not lost myself. I realized that, like, I don't know who I am, mm. you know, outside of work. Mm. So I think this year is really, like, finding that and then, like, turning that into different work projects. But I think for now, that's the main focus is just growing as an individual, which will help me grow my business. But, yeah, I think for now, that's that's my biggest thing. Are you a a reader? Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I used to be a really big reader in high school. Yeah. Well, not big. Like, I used to read Mm -hmm. every night. Um... I wouldn't really consider myself a reader now. Yeah. Like, I, I do read, but so, I won't, like, set myself a goal. Like, I need to finish, like, one book a month. Yeah. You know, because then I feel like it becomes a drag instead yeah. of, like, something, you know, you just should want to do. But, yeah, I, I I won't consider myself a deep reader, but I do read. Is, is, there, is there a book that you're tapping into right now that you're like, okay. I read this and this has been helping me with my yeah. better myself? Yeah, so it's not something I'm, I've read in the past month, but I've 
been reading this for the past year. It's 101 Essays That'll Change the Way You Think. Okay. So before I oh. bought this book, yeah. I read the reviews and the reviews were absolutely terrible. Like everyone was bashing her with the writer and everyone was just bashing the book in general, saying like it's super um, like unrealistic way of thinking and this, this, that. And I was like, let me buy that. Um, and I bought it and it's just basically... It's exactly in the title, like 101 essays that the artist wrote. They could be like two lines, three lines, four pages, five pages, you know. And each one is like a chapter kind yeah, of. Yeah. And it's basically just like life lessons that she learned. And I find them super helpful. Like a lot of them were about people pleasing or, mm. you know, about like how to become a better person, how to become a better like mother, father, partner, you know. So yeah. I found them that really helpful in the sense of like, you know, I related to her a lot. So I think that's why people didn't like her is they just didn't relate to her didn't story, relate. which is fine, but I yeah. did, so I really enjoyed that book. But besides that, no, I think I've really been tapping into faith a bit more. Okay, good. Cool. And, uh, and like, guiding me in a certain sense. No, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. That's good for you. Mm -hmm. Well, that is, it's great to hear because, A, I got a chance to know mm -hmm. more about you, but also, too, it's great to hear that you are taking the necessary steps mm -hmm. to make these, uh, make mm -hmm. these changes and stuff. One question I'm going to ask you, though, mm -hmm. we talked about your younger self before. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to your younger self right now? Okay. Knowing what you know, knowing what you've been through, what would mm -hmm. you say to the younger Lorena? That's a, that's a tough one because there's so much I would say. I would write her an essay. <laughs> <laughs> um, have, you ever, have you ever thought of doing something like that? I did. I did. I saw a TikTok about that once yeah. and I was like, mm, that would be cool. I'd like to write it now to your future self yeah. and see how much. But I do journal a lot, so mm -hmm. I feel like I'll always have like a, a little sense. bit of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, definitely don't give up. I think that's just the major thing that, like, anyone who's going through a hard time would want to hear. Like, mm -hmm. and honestly, like, have faith. <laughs> that That's, like, something I never thought I would say to yeah. my younger self. But, you know, I feel like for a long time I was very lost. And, like, you know, it's, like, it's hard to say don't give up to someone who, like, doesn't believe in anything. You know, so it's, like, don't give up. But, like, who am I doing it for? Yeah. You know, so yeah. as much as you have your family and friends and everyone, like, it's, like, I feel like having, like, faith will give you also a purpose to like not give up yeah so i think my younger self i would just tell her like you know there's there's big bigger and better things coming like just have faith and don't give up on where you are right now because you know it's gonna get better and it will get better and you're gonna achieve everything you want to achieve and more so don't worry yeah mm -hmm. well that's amazing and i appreciate sharing that it's always good to think about you know where we started from mm -hmm. to where we are now mm -hmm. The things we're doing to be even further mm -hmm. uh, but looking back at where you were before to be able to say you know what I came this far I am where I am now and I'm, I'm going places and it yeah, sounds strong. like yeah. you're going many many places and I look Thank forward you. to seeing more of your progress going Thank forward you. because I think it's awesome I think the, the message that you share with with people mm -hmm. uh, resonates well with a lot of people it's just that maybe a lot of people haven't yet got a chance to tap into mm -hmm. who you are. So I'm definitely going to make sure that they are able to uh, check out your profile, to learn you. more about you. If you're in the East End area, in St. Leonard area, uh, that's where Lorena operates out of. So you can definitely check her out, hit her up for some training and some services as well. Look out for her six-week program that's coming out soon also. Right. And pick up some bands, show your support, support local Thank as well. You. To you. Make sure that we keep that going, going forward. I really do appreciate you coming of here. Ah, uh, man, running. the love, the energy has been great. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Phenomenal. As you know, the first five podcasts back in the building again is available on Spotify, Apple, Google, and Amazon Music. In addition to other streaming platforms around the world, make sure to follow us on Instagram at the first five podcasts for your weekly dose of mental motivation and inspiration as we aim to help you be the best version of you 1% at a time. Also, for free fitness game and movement inspiration, make sure to follow us at goodfit underscore fitness as well. More episodes, more interviews, and more energy is on the way, so please continue to keep it locked. It's your boy, Coach K. It's Lorena, and we appreciate you guys tapping in today. We out. Peace. Freedom, so we march it on towards the targets. It's hard to break through sometimes, and so we march like Spartans. There's a flaw to everything.